Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have, thanks to Evans E on Twitter, Explosive. We now have video showing New York police officers scolding Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's security guy driver for crossing the road and driving recklessly and radically. Maybe the lighting is a bit limited and the video quality is not the best, but we can make out that the guy is trying to negotiate or argue with the police officer pacing back and forth. But why? What really happened here? And the best explanation uh, is, of course, allegedly that Harry and Meghan jumped into a cab with Doria so their security detail in tinted glass SUVs could stage a paparazzi run on the streets of New York City so they could have footage for Netflix or something. Yeah, sounds a bit of a stretch, even for the Montecito morons, but we, we are so used to the most blatant lies from them that we are close to not being surprised by anything. And not to brag, but I could have gotten the Harkles out of the New York City chase predicament with a public statement of just three sentences. It's their fault for choosing amateurs for their crisis communications management. You get what you pay for. The problem is that they lied in such a lousy way that it was so easy to disprove what they were claiming. Because yes, it looks like the catastrophic chase statement was made by Megan herself. And I shared other thoughts on Twitter about this. Megan's number one problem is that she's got all the traits of a toxic micromanager. She hires all the security and PR stars, but she ends up doing whatever she wants against their advice. Then, when things go wrong, I'm sure she, one, scolds them, and two, tells them to fix it. And to be fair with the Duchess of Sausages, she doesn't do this personally. No, she, she does this with everyone. Security, PR, nannies, gardeners, journalists, everyone. But there are people and outlets that the long hand of the Harkles cannot reach. And by this point, even TMZ are turning on them, thanks to Royal News Network. I like this breakdown by TMZ. They're like, this just doesn't make sense and no one is backing up their story. And Harry's very royal demand is going down like a lead balloon. Bad move, Harry. Bad move. It was so arrogantly entitled in a place where his royal title is meaningless. Like Bagrid said, we fought a war centuries ago so we don't live under, under the thumb of royals. Believe me, if TMZ has turned on you, I don't know what's next. People magazine. But oh, we still have questions about what happened because I'm still trying to figure out why the star bodyguard of the Harkles had his tie almost exactly matched with Megan's dress. I don't want to delve into yet another conspiracy theory or dangerous gossip, but the comments are open and everything is fair game. Go for it. And what is not fair game is that since the writers of the upcoming live-action remake of The Little Mermaid have taken a dig at the Princess of Wales, which I mentioned a couple episodes ago, people are attacking Hale Bailey, who plays Ariel, and has absolutely no responsibility on that. And what's more, she's a huge fan of William and Catherine. Thanks to the Caribbean prince, once again, Meghan Markle's toxicity poisons everything. Don't direct any negativity towards Hale Bailey as she's friends with Catherine and a nice person. Beyoncé booked Hale and Chloe to perform at Earthshot in Boston. And speaking of digs at the Princess of Wales in movies and TV shows, you might remember that I also mentioned Priyanka Chopra yesterday, how she was asked a long time ago who was her dream date, and she said that Prince William... And you know that Priyanka is still a good friend of Megan. I mean, Megan still has use for her. But, well, it so happens that Priyanka stars in a new Amazon show called Citadel. And there is a very crude joke about Catherine. So we are starting to see a pattern here. I'm going to establish the circumstances of this dig at Catherine so you can judge for yourself. In episode 3... The Quantico Allen's character Nadia Sin instructs partner Mason Kane, played by Madden, to, pee, to meet with crime leader Balduino Novasto to broker a deal with the military. 
Nadia does not appear in person, only via earpiece to translate for Mason. The chief of armed forces? You might as well have asked me how to get between the legs of the Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, Sent Moros Balduino Basto asked Mason during the scene. Yeah, it's fairly tasteless. Of course, you can imagine that this serious episode was recorded when Catherine was still the Duchess of Cambridge, so we are not mistaken. This is a cheap shot. Not only is a cheap shot, but it also looks like a it's uh, like it's a cheap show. And I quote: "Citadel is a three hundred million disaster for Amazon." Executive produced by the Russo brothers, this globe-trotten spy thriller stars Richard Madden and Priyanka Chopra Jonas. Too bad it's so bland. Well, I'm not gonna say that this show flopped because of some kind of bad Megan juju because shows nowadays in general are far too involved trying to take all the boxes of diversity, politics, gender and equality stuff that they forget to make them fun and entertaining. So I'm going to just assume that it's part of what is going with today's show business as a whole. Would not be surprised that uh, The Little Mermaid might not perform as expected. Either way, it's a classic story, so I'm sure it will have a strong opening weekend. And speaking of fiction, Stalker is arrested lurking outside Harry and Meghan's Montecito mansion in the middle of the night after their security staff placed him under a citizen's arrest. Very convenient since Harry is still fighting for that international protected person status. So I guess that now the strategy is to flood her headlines with car chases, stalkers, and other deranged people. But it's good that so many people are already looking through the mask and into the real intentions of this too. I mean, they have burned through the victim card so many times that it has become a joke in itself. And of course, in the Daily Mail, they have to conveniently remind everyone that Harry at the Oprah interview two years ago revealed how the evil Buckingham Palace revoked their security detail when they stepped down as senior royals and moved to North America. That's why they had to sell all their stories and their privacy to Netflix and Spotify because it was the only way they could afford the security they needed. So if you complain about their complaining, then you are the bigot that hates them and don't want them to have security for their kids. And more and more voices are speaking against them. Camilla Long, the biggest threat to Harry and Meghan, is in paparazzi on bicycles. It's their own paranoia. I would not call it their paranoia. I would say that it is Harry's paranoia that Meghan takes advantage of. And we saw it at the horror mentory that nobody was chasing them and Megan was literally acting like she was worried about someone spotting them being inside an SUV with tinted windows and coming out of a private basement garage. As for Harry, well, his eyes say everything you need to know. My Royal Rogues, remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified on my upcoming episodes. Two most important words, much love and bliss.